everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hosea chapter 9 verse 12, as well as Matthew chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord. Bless your hearers, bless the doers, Lord God, and help us to have understanding and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. Hosea chapter 9, verse 12. Even if they bring up children, I will bereave them till none is left. Woe to them when I depart from them. All right, and so this is Hosea, right? So we know that he's talking about the children of Israel and how they were adulterers, how they were idolaters right and he talks a lot about adultery because the analogy is of a faithful groom and an unfaithful wife and so therefore um the adultery is actually idolatry in that she went and worshiped foreign gods she brought um many detestable practices to the things that god had set up for her and so therefore she was an adulterer. And so here it says, even if they bring up children, I will bereave them till none is left. Speaking of the children of Israel. And so even if I bring up children, meaning that even if the children survive childhood, right? Even if they make it through childhood, even if they get through all those phases, right? It says, I will bereave them till none is left, meaning he'll take each one of them away until none is left, right? Each one of them, their life will be snuffed out. And so it says, woe to them when I depart from them. So God is saying, you know, when his, his presence departs from them, woe to them, right? Because they have chosen other gods. They have chosen other paths. They have chosen other things except for him. And so when he departs from them, when he finally has had enough and he turns away from them, woe to them, right? That judgment is upon them now. So yes, this is Hosea chapter 9, verse 12, and it's completed today with Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And so who is that? He is talking about Jesus, that Jesus withdrew into Galilee when he got the news that John had been ar arrested. And so this is conflated today with um, Hosea chapter 9 verse 12 because of bereavement, of loss, of grief, right? And initially, Matthew, um, Jesus had not lost um, John, but he is God, right? He knows the future. He knows the fate of John before John was even born, right? And so it says, now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, meaning he went away, right? He stepped away from the crowds. He he got away from, from the area that he was in. Jesus knew what the fate of John would be from the the moment he, you know, created the universe, Jesus it is all knowing and all seeing. So when it says that he withdrew to Galilee, he had to have that grief in his heart because he knew when when John was arrested that that this was his fate, right? That this is what would come to pass, right? It just because he knew it would happen doesn't mean that he's not going to have grief about it, right? And so um, this is conflated today with Hosea because, you know, we want to be on the right side of grief as it relates to God, right? We don't want to grieve him and have him bereave us, um, but we want to be on the side of, hey, if if we lost our life, then God would grieve us in a sad way because we have done his will, right? And he's there to receive us. And, and so... John did the will of the father, right? When he was speaking to Herod, he knew that God knew and, and Jesus knew the fate that would, um, would come to pass through Herod's daughter. 
Um, so it's not as if he, he stopped that from happening. It was all allowed to happen, but it doesn't mean that God didn't grieve or, or was sad at the loss of, of, um, such a wonderful child of God. Right. And it's, so it says now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee and let's read the conflation scripture again. It is Hosea, oh, sorry, Hosea chapter nine, verse 12. Even if they bring up children, I will bereave them till none is left. Woe to them when I depart from them. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for this scripture. Thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us to be on the right side, Lord. Show us the way, God. Let us be lovers of you doing your will, fearless. Lord God, help us to go forth and not um, go the way of the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Be my Savior and Lord. Sit on the throne of my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Forgive me for all of my sins, Lord. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself. No one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he is going to help you in all your decision making. He's going to show you the way. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.